Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Optobotomus coming at you with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Transformers Titans Return Deluxe Class Grax and Skull Smasher. As you can see for the package, you got a really nice clamshell that fully shows a Skull Smasher as well as his accessories. On the back of the card, you got a really cool image of a Skull Smasher with Grax kind of separating from him. On the side here, you got the Transformers text with the Generation logo. On the back, you got that crossplay where you can see all these Titans return figures are interchangeable. So if you had Terrible, for example, which is a, a Titan Master figure, you can put it on a deluxe size figure. And then uh, for a bit of a read-up on them, it says the Decepticons unite with Titan Master partners to power up for battle. Grax masks the energy signature of the bot he's bound to, making Skull Smasher invisible to the Autobots. That's pretty cool. And then you can see that you got his robot mode, his uh, alligator mode, and then Grax becoming his head and things like that. So pretty cool on him, uh, but uh, for the packaging on this guy, that's about it for him. So without further ado, let's get him out here and see how cool he actually is. Alright guys, so here we have Skull Smasher, or as I like to call him, Skull Cruncher, opened up and out of its packaging. And once again, Hasbro has done a terrific job with this, in giving us a very classic character in the way that he looked, but modernizing him. This guy really did come out great looking, and for a deluxe figure, he honestly might be my favorite, I, I don't know. This guy really does just look the part beautifully. As you can see, he is an alligator or crocodile. I, I'm not exactly sure the, the specific differences. I think it has something to do with the way the snout is. Like a crocodile has like more pointy snout, whereas an alligator is more, you know, wide. I, I don't actually know. But as you can see, I'm, I'm playing with the guy's mouth. So uh, he does have an articulated mouth, which is terrific. But all in all, really very, very cool looking. Obviously, uh, he's probably a little bit bigger than an alligator would be. It's definitely not in scale properly. But, uh, you know, he's a Cybertronian alligator, so they probably get a little bit bigger. As you can see, he's got a couple legs right here that uh, do have a little bit of articulation. Now, the back leg here really doesn't do anything other than hinge. Kind of, I think that's actually a ball joint, to be totally honest. Yeah, that's a ball joint. So you can flex that in and out. You can rotate that. But it only does it at the kind of upper thigh area of it. He doesn't have a knee bend or anything. And then the arms here, they can rotate right there a little bit. Uh, and then you can swivel them out. You can also rotate this uh, around uh, so you can't get some poses with them but you're not going to get like a very dynamic uh, pose for this guy I mean that's basically what you're going to get for him but again he's an alligator so he's not really going to need that much uh, much like the original G1 toy uh, his weapon kind of is made up here of the uh, back section of his tail but what's really cool is the way that they have this pegged in you can actually articulate well I mean it can't come off if you overdo it but you can swivel it from side to side which is cool so you get some articulation for the tail and then like I said the alligator's head is on a ball joint so you can get it looking left right you can get it looking up and down you can rotate it if you want and then the mouth can open great detail on the inside of that mouth as well and some real nice uh, teeth and everything uh, on the inside here you can see some ridges on the top part of his the actual jaw you got some real great detail in here uh, with his actual tongue one thing that's interesting is that uh, there is some assembly required that actual head here is not attached when you get it out of the package it does just attach via a ball joint and you can see you can pull it off uh, but you are going to have to plug that in there uh, when you get yours so uh, keep that in mind it's not broken or anything but i just think that the package was not necessarily big enough to have that attached to him in his robot mode but real great detail you got a nice decepticon logo here you got one on the side here you got one on his opposite side as well one thing that i don't particularly like uh, is that uh, the section right here uh, and i have to use this to kind of get at it because it's a little bit tricky but this is a uh, softer rubber material uh, you can see it's flexing everything else is hard plastic uh, but this this is the compartment where you, you store his little headmaster dude and I actually forgot to bring this in here, but uh, you also do get the collector card. Uh, you can see the real nice art right there. And then on the back, you've got the tech specs that show Skull Smasher and Grax and how Skull Smasher's uh, power increases when you add Grax to it. But uh, so you got Grax that sits on the inside here. And they actually did a really good job. It's not, you're not going to be able to see it very well because uh, the lighting is, I, I can't really get 
the light in there. I mean, you can kind of, no, you're not going to be able to see it, but you got an actual sculpted seat on the inside there. And then in the front, you actually do have a little bit of a view screen, which is kind of cool. So it's like there's a control panel on the inside there. Uh, I just don't like the fact that they use this uh, softer rubber material. I don't know why they did it, but uh, it, it, it just kind of bothers me. Now, the original one, you, you put Grax in his mouth. Um, now, I, I'll say this, this was was in a development and in existence way before the incident that happened in Disney World, so I, I doubt that they changed it or anything for that uh, unfortunate accident that happened in Florida, but I can see why they, they don't put it in there anymore, because that would look a little awkward. Hey, we're going to put that right there. Yeah, that's probably not a good thing, but uh, I, so I don't mind that they put that here. I just think that they should have did a better job with the actual flap, and it actually is a little bit different of a color. You can, I don't know how well that's going to come across on the camera, but it is a little bit of a different shade of green than what's on the plastic around them. It's not bad or anything, but it does stand out a little bit, and that's probably my biggest gripe about just the figure itself. For Grax here, you can see real nice detail. Uh, again, all new sculpting on all these uh, little uh, Titan Master figures. Uh, I can't find one that has the same parts being used currently uh, in the first wave of figures. So if somebody knows of one, point it out because I, I haven't been able to find one. But uh, I'm just trying to get his arms out here. You can see some nice paint detail on his actual head right here so that you can see that a little bit better. So again, real nice sculpt of detail on his arms and such. And then you got the uh, gold paint there on the actual face, which uh, does look really nice. And then again, you can see for articulation, uh, he does have the little ball joints here at his shoulders. Uh, his head is on a ball joint, so you can rotate that very nicely. He's got hinges right here at his actual hips, and then he bends here at the knee itself. And then to transform him again, like all of them, you just rotate it around, and there's Grax's actual face. Well, I should say Skull Smasher's face on Grax's back. So uh, for that, there you go. And then for a comparison to his G1 self, is. Uh, and as you can see, you're seeing a lot of very similar elements here. Uh, you you do have a little bit more of a purple color here on the original G1 figure, whereas this one has a little bit more of a pinkish red. Uh, it doesn't matter, honestly, to me either way what color it is. I, I still think it looks pretty good. But a lot of those same design choices are really here. I mean, you, you got this little section right here, for example, with the little a slot that goes right in there. I mean, that's very much like what you have on this, although this isn't painted. I mean, that's painted, but... I don't think that's necessarily what they're homaging. I mean, you can see you got the little Decepticon logo. You got the purple and black lines, much like this one has. Uh, obviously, a lot of the uh, color cues are very similar in terms of the green legs. You got the uh, green body. You got the little red, or in this case, purple front section. You got, you know, the kind of off-white color. Uh, and it is more of an off-white. The color here is actually matched pretty decently, which does look pretty good, if you ask me. Uh, the mouth, uh, as you can see, you do have the, the green section for the top and then the uh, purple or red on the bottom again like i said grax initially stored on the inside here and uh, i don't think they would really want to do that with a, a new toy or anything but like i said it, it happened this figure was made in in development before what happened in uh, disney world so uh, but for a comparison you can see that this is how the grax compares to the g1 version uh, much darker color than the a g1 version now uh, that's something that i would imagine the takara one would probably change but then when you look at the actual face again real nice uh, resemblance to that G1 face with uh, the little covers for the eyes and everything. I mean, very, very nice. Definitely happy with how that turned out. But for his transformation, uh, it's very, very simple and very, very similar to that G1 version. First, you want to remove the tail, set that off to the side. Uh, I should kind of talk about this. Uh, you can have his weapon stored underneath here, just kind of pull that out it wedges in there very securely so uh, you do have his gun right here that does store very nicely under there and then you got this uh, i don't know if this is meant to kind of I mean, you can kind of take racks where's he at you can kind of take racks and uh, put them here you got a little slot right there and you can see that it's kind of like a little seat so you can kind of put them like here uh, get that in there and he could be like a gun thing, and then you can have that there. Uh, so it's like you can have that be a weapon, maybe attach it to a, a base mode or something like that. Uh, so you do have that uh, extra ability right there. So just taking all this stuff, putting this off to the side just like that. And then for the figure, you're just going to take these. You take the lower section of the legs, and you just tuck these in along the side. And then you rotate these around just like so. Do that on both sides as well. Take the little feet 
rotate that out and there you guys little feedums take this uh, head section here for the alligator detach this rotate that back and then these sections swivel down to the side like so and then you bring this all the way back you got uh, two different hinges right here so make sure you bring that all the way back why are you not going all the way back no, oh, ah my leg bring that back out oh, there you go something like that actually i thought that came back more Oh, maybe it doesn't. No, that gets stuck right there. Okay, so just tuck that along his back like so. Rotate these pieces back. And they actually do kind of lock into place right there. Rotate his hands around. Do that on this side as well. Spin them here at the upper part of the uh, bicep. And then rotate them down here at his uh, forearm. So he does have uh, extra articulation down there, which is really nice. So straighten that out. Bring that around. And then... Stand him up there, bring in Grax, transform him, and stick his head right on there. Uh, now, actually, with Grax, some of these characters, you have to rotate the heads on the little guy to get him to fit on there easier. Uh, Grax is one of those figures, so I put his little head facing the same way as his big head, and then that fits in there very nicely. And head on, and there you have Skull Smasher in his robot mode. Again, much like his actual alligator mode, Hasbro did a great job of kind of capturing that likeness to how that original actually looked. This guy really does come across very nicely. You know, all the way down from uh, his gun right here, which like I said, is very similar to how the original one was, to how his tail can come off and be used as a weapon as well. So just the overall likeness on this particular figure. I mean, they really did a great job with the guy. Now setting this off to the side and bringing in the original for a comparison, Again, obviously uh, the colors are a little bit different, but a lot of those same elements that the original had are nicely recreated here in the new Titans Return one. Uh, like I was talking about, you do have this little weapon right here that is made out of his tail, much like the original one did. Uh, this is more of like a kind of like melee weapon, whereas this one is more of a gun kind of thing, I guess. Well, no, I mean, you really can't do that. I mean, it, it doesn't have the same kind of peg right here that allows you to like beat people with it. But in updating the, you know, the overall design and, you know, putting more of the, the actual tail as a part of the actual weapon, you eliminate these little side pieces right here that the original one had. Get that, make sure that's all the way down. Uh, as you can see, those kind of stick out and give it a little bit of an ugly look. This is a lot more streamlined. Uh, you do still have the little the alligator legs that hang off here on the side here. You do have the, the, the feet that kind of hang off on the side. You got the big giant alligator head that, you know, hangs off his back if you wanted to. You can even rotate that around like that and get a little bit more of that accurate look. I mean, that kind of keeps it a little bit more up against his back and then obviously positions properly when you transform them. Uh, and I also really love how, despite the fact that this guy has the little tech spec thing that comes down with the chest and the new one doesn't, they still painted that and put some real good detail in there, like with the coloring and the extra paint detail that's kind of thrown in there to replicate how it looked on the original. I really like that. I just think that, you know, in recreating this character, they stayed fairly true to the original while still updating it and giving it a little bit more of a modern look. And then for comparison to another more modern the Headmaster figure, here he is next to the Hardhead, and uh, he does look a little bit taller, not by much, but you can see at the head he is a little bit taller than Hardhead, but really not too bad, but using these guys as kind of, you know, the scale for the new deluxe figures... Here they are next to the Combiner Wars Sunstreaker. And as you can see, Sunstreaker is a smaller figure by comparison. So it is nice to see that these uh, new figures do get a little bit bigger. For Skull Smasher's uh, articulation, uh, the head is on that, you know, ball joint that the small little head has. So it does get a little bit of pivot side to side, up and down, and then rotates very nicely. Uh, the shoulders here do rotate at ball joints. Uh, as part of the transformation, you also do have that hinge right there. Uh, so you do get a little bit better range of motion. Uh, at the upper part, he does rotate, which is really nice. And then he does bend here at the elbow. And then the actual uh, forearms also do rotate. So lots of articulation in this guy in terms of the arms. I guess you could say they're wrists move in and out. Uh, one thing that I will say is that uh, a lot of these wrists do seem a little bit loose. This isn't all that bad, but some of them are a little bit looser. And then when you come down here to his hips, uh, the hip here is actually fairly loose. And you can see it is on a ball joint. And then at the upper part of the thigh, he's got a rotation joint. This one is really very stiff. And as you can see, in trying to rotate it, this just makes the ball joint pop off. So you, you got to really hold that ball joint in place to get that to rotate. Although 
otherwise when you just rotate it it pops completely off uh, on both of the legs it does that so that's a little unfortunate uh, really tight the thigh rotation it, it's very nice but it's kind of completely pointless in the fact that in trying to do it you're, you're just going to be pulling off his leg I mean it's a little bit harder actually you know when you're just pulling it like that but you rotate it and it just puts that little extra pressure on it that makes it pop out so that is a little unfortunate but you can rotate it around I mean they hold very nicely I mean you can see they're not overly loose or anything it's just not as you know secure as of a ball socket kind of thing uh, he does have two joints here at the knee to kind of facilitate the transformation so you get a nice range of motion with the legs and then I guess you could say the little feedums here can uh, move forward and back just you know basically as part of the transformation so uh real good articulation on the guy you can see the overall look is very very nice and really does recreate that look for skull cruncher very nicely I'm really very happy with this guy and again as part of that mixed play pattern you know you can take a terrible's head for example so I'm gonna take that out and you can pop that in there like so and you can do something like that if you really wanted so all these uh, different you know Titan Master figures you can put them all on there and everything uh, you, know, you can drop them if you really don't like them that much you can just throw them on the ground and rotate his head this is one of the figures that definitely uh, benefits from having the heads on some of these rotated uh, to kind of fit in here although the crash bash here doesn't seem to fit in there that way so let's rotate his head the opposite direction and uh, Oh, that guy, that's really stiff. Yeah, that doesn't fit in there very well at all. Let me try this way. Um, get that lined up and uh, put that in. Eh, there we go. So you can do something like that. And actually, that doesn't look all that bad. I mean, that kind of fits in terms of look, I guess. You know, or maybe you, you want to put an Autobot head on there. So it's bringing loudmouth so you can pop his head on there. I, I mean, that, that and again, I mean, all these kind of look pretty cool. And like I said, you know, the different powers and abilities and things like that, you know, it kind of transferred to the new characters and everything. So eh, it's fun, you know, and kids are going to have fun with it, it, especially if, you know, individual ones have different powers and stuff. You know, you can use your imagination, but I do dig it. I, and I think that kids really are going to as well. This is definitely a figure that really looks good and I think will appeal to both collectors as well as kids. Now to uh, transform him back first, we're going to take Grax. We're going to throw him off to the side there he goes i'm just having fun rotate the uh, fists up into the forearms and then you bring this section up and you actually got on the inside here it's kind of hard to see but you got these little notches right here and in the back and then you can see there are groove sections right along the upper section you want to bring this up and line those perfectly so that it's now on an angle like that so do that on this side as well put those little grooves in that little slot put that down and that'll line things up perfectly so when you bring this around the little tabs on the uh, alligator's neck are going to slot right below these hole sections you got a little slot right here and a little slot right there so you bring that down push that in locks that in there very securely so it kind of gives you a, a guide on where you're supposed to rotate things so bring that around then just rotate these get the little uh, alligator legs on the outside here and then I, I forgot to mention this he does have these little posts right here that you know you can take a Titan Master figure and you can put them right there it's really oh man that's that, there we go and that that hole is a little bit bigger so it, it can fit on there so you can have them riding around on there and then you take these legs you want to rotate these here while keeping this green piece pointed down so rotate that up uh, you take the foot tuck those away I should have did that so again rotate here keeping the little green section pointed down bring the two halves together those are going to tab together securely if you get it lined up properly squeeze that in there nice now if it doesn't really hold all that well that's when you bring this in and you tab that right in there and now you have a real a solid connection there kind of bring these little legs out just to spread them out a little bit give some dynamic look to them kind of position that you can take his gun again you don't have to put it on there but you can take this peg this up underneath the tail section like so put them in there you can take this guy like i said rotate his head and if you want to oh that twist it around a little bit if you wanted to you could put him in that compartment or just you know have him kind of hang out and stand there but once you're done there you have a skull smasher and grax back in their alt modes
general a really great recreation of a classic looking toy they did a great job of updating this guy both in terms of the look the articulation all that stuff that's kind of modern they were able to put in this while still kind of maintaining the integrity of the original looking figure i think this guy really turned out great uh, the alligator mode lots of articulation a lot of just personality and character in this i love the way that it turned out Obviously, Grax is uh, very similar to all the other ones. Uh, I am very happy that they uh, give them different looks, you know, in terms of the, the sculpting and things like that. So really happy with how that has been going so far with a lot of these Titan Master figures. Uh, the transformation is very simple, but if you watch my recent review of a lot of those uh, original Headmaster figures, and you saw the one for Skull Cruncher, you could see that the transformation between that and this is almost identical. They really did a nice job of recreating it here. And that robot mode uh, looks great. Uh, uh, again, they, they just did a terrific job all the way throughout this figure. And honestly, like I said, in terms of first wave deluxe figures, this guy might be my favorite. So all that being said, if a Skull Cruncher or Smasher, whatever you want to call him, is a figure that you'd like to add to your collection, he as well as the rest of the deluxe figures are currently hitting various retail locations right now. Or if you don't want to wait, there's always Big Bad Toy Store. So all you have to do is click on the link down in the video description. You'll go to BBTS where you can check out availability on this guy, as well as the rest of the new Transformers Titans Return figures. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optibotomus. Don't forget that if you like this video, to please like and share it. Also, be sure to subscribe in case you haven't already subscribed. That way you never miss a future review of mine. And as always, until next time... I'll talk to you later. You're a true